The Dance Between Kaleidoscope Curiosity and Focused Ambition. Dear Alexander, 41. I have often felt regret and lamentation over the seemingly ineffective busyness that has stimulated my days. This busyness usually comes in two forms. One, completing tasks that make me feel like I've accomplished something when I've really just been putting off the most difficult tasks. Two, my insatiable curiosity leads me to stumble upon new ideas and topics that take time away from the other tasks but fulfill my soul and my mind. Busyness usually accompanies the classic A-type high conscientiousness personality that I identify with. However, I've realized I actually don't want to be busy. Business implies a chaotic lack of control over my priorities and time. Instead, now I opt to create flexible, deliberate control where my decisions are of conscious choice instead of either resentful obligation towards responsibilities I actually don't want to do or are as a result of the momentum of checkbox ticking tasks I convince myself are important but really aren't. Another characteristic that accompanies my type of character is the want for control. However, maybe I don't always have to be in control of my day. Why do we always have to seek more and more control? It can be valuable to let go and allow the spontaneity of my curiosity and just generally the, the energy and wave and ebbs and flows of life take me to new horizons of discovery. And so there is a dance between effective progress and the art of living in the flow of life. Yet it is hard to escape the feeling of wasted time when my actions have been without conscious thought and disciplined action. John Quincy Adams, the sixth U.S. president, illuminates this thought. He said, our tendency to pour tremendous energy into doing things with little reflection on whether those things are the right things to do in the first place. And even the most industrious self-exertion can fail to attain a worthwhile result and why unfocused ambition is a guarantee of frustration rather than fulfillment. End quote. So unfocused ambition has caused frustration in me many times. I end up doing a lot of nothing instead of a few tasks deeply and effectively. And when I recall back to the source of this frustration, I usually either did one of a number of things. One, I planned to have a space for focused ambition, I got to, and then I just got distracted. Two, I chose the more convenient, superficial, easier tasks instead of the more difficult priority tasks. Three, I never clearly defined exactly what was the one main priority to fully focus on. Instead, I confused myself with half a dozen less important to-dos. Effort exerted does not equal results obtained. Quote, when a clarity of purpose is lacking, even the mightiest discipline after all is wasted without a clear direction. End quote. Just because I put a lot of time into a task does not mean I will get the result I was looking for. In fact, I'd often realize I was working on the wrong task or spending too much time on peripheral tasks that didn't actually have practical significance. This is why clear direction and purpose is needed to be defined early in the morning before I begin. Losing yourself in rabbit holes of curiosity. Quote, Adams laments his tendency to lose himself in rabbit holes of what may be interesting but is not relevant to his larger aims. End quote. John Quincy Adams says, On looking back and comparing the time consumed with knowledge acquired, I have no occasion to take pride in the result of my application. I have been a severe student all the days of my life, but an immense proportion of the time I have dedicated to the search of knowledge has been wasted upon subjects which can never be profitable to myself or useful to others. End quote. This is a tricky, confronting idea to play with. How much time have I truly wasted in pursuing subjects that are not directly profitable to me? Historically, I believe I've dedicated considerable time to learning and seeking knowledge in areas that don't have direct, immediately practical significance. 
But I don't believe this is deleter deleterious, or negative, or unless it occupies a majority of my dedicated learning time. Meaning, if I spend 80% of my time focusing on practical knowledge that is profitable to myself, and another 20% on random rabbit holes that may go nowhere, but engages and satiates my curiosity, you know, I may very well find a balance between the dance of focused ambition and non-judgmental kaleidoscope curiosity. But now, to argue against myself, I believe it's important to break my own rules sometimes. Disregard that these ratios, that 80-20 ratio, and simply do what I want to do. Seek what I want to seek in areas I find stimulating. Not every day or every month or every year of my life has to be dedicated to the pursuit of focused ambition. Why? Who says? What a liberating freeling and freeing realization that it is that I can leave the matrix if and when I desire. I can get off the treadmill. Perhaps I can find solace and peace by dancing with my curiosity more and not judging myself for not feeling like I've achieved something. But there's a caveat. This should be a conscious choice, not a justification for haphazard pleasurable behavior to distract me from my problems. At the end of the day, I don't want to be a mindless slave to productivity, ambition, and achievement. These things must be chosen deliberately and purposefully. John Quincy Adams again says, I have derived so little use from my labors that it has often brought me to the borders of discouragement, and I have been attempted to abandon my books altogether. This, however, is impossible, for the habit has so long been fixed in me as to have become a passion, and when once severed from my books, I find little or nothing in life to fill the vacancy of time. I must therefore continue to plod and to lose my labor, contending myself with the consolation that even this drudgery of science contributes to virtue, though it led me not to wealth or honor. End quote. So interestingly, Adams admits he does not receive some value out of this process. Accept virtue. Though chasing curiosity and general knowledge can feel like I'm a dog chasing its tail because the process doesn't necessarily contribute to wealth or honor like Adams suggests his process doesn't. But the process of it all still teaches and it still gives intrinsic value in its own unique way. In any case, there are other pursuits in life that I choose to do that grant me wealth and honor. Perhaps Adams didn't have this, but I do. Perhaps one does not have to pick one or the other, but instead find a way to dance between both. Quote, Several years later, finding himself so absorbed in learning logarithmic calculation that a whole day had fled, he chastised himself for unfocused curiosity that flits from subject to subject, unbridled by poor time management, lacking focused commitment to a deeper study of any one discipline, end quote. That's how I felt. Adams adds on, I find it easy to engage my attention in scientific pursuits of almost any kind, but difficult to guard against two abuses, the one of being insensibly drawn from one to another, as I now have from chronology to astronomy, from astronomy to logarithms, the other of misapplying time, which is essential to the business of life, public or private. End quote. I have felt the social and societal pressures to commit to one singular focus and discipline over one's life. Like Adams, there is so much that draws my attention and curiosity, and to pick one thing would be like forcing my mind to a prison. So I don't pick one thing, and I do flit occasionally from subject to subject, but I do my best to do it consciously and deliberately. But maybe a bit of the magic of this dance between ambition, progress, productivity, and freeing curiosity is to act with this conscious decision making, where I know at this time I will work on this topic, and at, and at that time I will work on this un other unrelated topic. So I I've clear delineated lines and boundaries. 
where I can be effective and productive whilst mitigating the guilt and ill feeling of poor time management and lack of focus. On the other hand, it's important I create spaces where I remove all constraints, remove all boundaries, free yourself. Just let my mind take me where it wants to go. This is the place where it doesn't matter if my time management and productivity are poor because I have already made the conscious choice where this is the space I allow that to happen. So there is no judgment and all that is left is free-flowing curiosity. Quote, and yet life affords Adams a counterpoint to this harsh self-criticism. It is by such kaleidoscope curiosity that we arrive at what we don't know we didn't know and gradually broaden the shorelines of our knowledge amid the ocean of our ignorance. End quote. <sighs>